Good morning. Um, this is the first phase three trial of PARP inhibitors in ovarian cancer being presented ever. Uh, it's a neuroparib maintenance therapy in patients with recurrent ovarian cancer uh, and got OV16 NOVA trial. So why uh, maintenance therapy? Patients with ovarian cancer who relapse, uh, they get typically six courses of chemotherapy because of toxicity, you pause, then wait till next relapse, chemotherapy, relapse, the treatment-free intervals get shorter and shorter, and eventually all patients die of their disease. So there is a, there is a real need to extend the, 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 the treatment-free or the, the time from one uh, uh, therapy to the other uh, with less toxic treatment. This trial was done uh, in collaboration with uh, NGOT, European Network of Gynecologic Oncology Trials, with the lead group of Nordic Society of Gynecologic Oncology, and 15 countries uh, were involved uh, uh, in this trial. Tisaro was the sponsor of this trial. The trial has uh, been, the, the paper has been just published a few minutes ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, with a supplement, so all the questions you would like to ask, you can read in the New England Journal of Medicine. So what, why we, what was the hypothesis? The hypothesis is because the ovarian cancer is quite a heterogeneous disease genetically, and BRCA mutations and non-BRCA mutations still can, can uh, uh, affect the repair mechanism of DNA, and PARP inhibitors can actually make it possible for not for hindering repair of DNA in cancer cells. In that way, uh, the disease uh, uh, can be controlled. Um, uh, very, very targeted uh, mechanism of, of PARP inhibitors. And neuroparib is a PARP inhibitor. It's a selective PARP1-2 inhibitor. And our hypothesis was that all patients with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer would have clinical benefit uh, regardless of BRCA mutation status and regardless of uh, HRD uh, status, which is homologous recombination repair deficiency. And so typically when patient uh, relapse, uh, they get standard of care six courses of chemotherapy and have a response. At that time, patients were invited to uh, go enter in the NOVA trial. And centrally, upfront germline BRCA test was performed. According to that BRCA test, patients were divided into two cohorts, uh, two separate cohorts. And in each cohort, patients received once daily oral neuroparib or placebo in two to one randomization. And the tablets were, and the capsules were continued until progression of disease. 553 patients were randomized, 203 patients who had germline BRCA mutation, and the, the, the other, the whole group of patients who had no germline BRCA mutation. In the non germline BRCA mutation, we went ahead and performed the HRD test. Uh, that's called my choice HRD test, uh, and patients were then divided into two separate groups within that cohort, those who were HRD positive and those who were HRD negative. So the statistics was performed as such in that cohort that first the HRD positive population was seen, uh, the analysis was done, and if it, that was positive, the whole group of uh, patients were analyzed. And due to, as I have, uh, was asked to keep it to six minutes, so I have not uh, taken the Kaplan-Meier curves uh, to make sure that you also attend the presidential session. <laughs> so, so I will go through the results here. Conclusion is that clinical uh, neuroparib significantly improves PFS in patients with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer in whole population, not in separate groups, cohorts, in the whole population. If you look at the G-BRCA mute population, 
hazard ratio is 0.27. This is 73% decrease in the risk of progression in the G BRCA mute population, where median pre PFS increased from 5.5 months to 21 months. And the most important thing you will see in the afternoon as well is the separation of kaplan meier curves all the way uh, nicely uh, plateauing at the end with half of the patients in active treatment uh, at 18 months with the data cutoff we have. Uh, so half of the patients, we haven't actually reached the upper confidence interval of the patients who are in active treatment uh, in this uh, cohort. And the rest of the group, uh, the rest of the cohort, which is non-G BRCA, that's the rest of the patients, we could see uh, clinically meaningful, statistically significant improvement uh, in the whole group uh, with hazard ratio of 0.45, 55% risk reduction uh, of progression in this group with median PFS increasing from 3.9 months to 9.3 months, and one third of the patients still on active treatment after 18 months at the time we uh, did the data cutoff. So again, you will see a beautiful separation of Kaplan-Meier curves showing the durability of the efficacy of the treatment uh, all along. And we, as I said, that within that cohort, we had a group of Germ of the of the HRD positive population, and these patients had a hazard ratio of 0.38, uh, with median uh, progression-free survival increasing from 3.8 months to 12.9 months. So then you will ask, what happened to the uh, HRD negative disease? And in that, that was not a primary endpoint, but that was exploratory endpoint. And in, in, that patient, in these patients, we see a statistically significant improvement in uh, progression-free survival with a durable uh, efficacy uh, and with a hazard ratio of 0.58, which is 42% reduction uh, in the risk of relapse. And one-fifth of these patients after 18 months of data cutoff are still on active treatment. So there is a beautiful separation of Kaplan-Meier curves all the way along. And that means that this drug has efficacy in whole population of this trial. The toxicities were classic. PARP inhibitor toxicities, uh, basically lab abnormalities and fatigue. Uh, lab abnormalities were very well adjusted uh, by, by, by those modifications. And the, 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 the major thing is that most of the patients were kept on trial. Uh, so they did not discontinue the treatment due to toxicity. For example, for thrombocytopenia, 3% of the patients were dis discontinued due to toxicity. Uh, otherwise, they were on the trial until progression. And on top of it, there was no detrimental effect in quality of life uh, in the neuroparib uh, uh, arm. That means that patient can stay home, come once a month, get her tablets, talk to the doctor, go home, and uh, and do the normal uh, daily life, work, children, family, and everything else. So these landmark results warrant, this is the first phase three trial ever in PARP inhibitors, and it results uh, that neuroparib maintenance uh, treatment uh, should be given to whole uh, study population. <clears throat> 